A new twist in the alleged murder for hire plot. Police in Florida arresting a single mom, accusing her of arranging the killing of a prominent Florida State law professor. Authorities portray Catherine Magbanu as a kind of femme fatale in this case. Police say the Miami beauty linked Dan Markell's in-laws, a family of wealthy dentists, with a pair of hitmen from Miami. Now, the reason they allegedly wanted the famous law professor dead, an ugly War of the Roses type of divorce. This morning, Catherine Magbanu is facing a first-degree murder charge for the slaying of Professor Dan Markell. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crime Circus. My name's Drip Drop, and I'll be your host as always. But I'm not always the host, am I? Sometimes Baby Drip fills in for me. This is a family-friendly show. That's why there's no cussing, no gore, and nothing out of line or extreme on this show. I present you the videos for what they are, and I don't try to glorify violence or make this a spectacle. You don't deserve that. You, the viewer, deserve so much more. Anyways... This is the trial of Dan Markell, and if you've been following this case, you know that Luis Rivera has already testified against Katie. Katie was caught in a love triangle between Sigfredo Garcia and the dentist, aka Charlie Adelson, which is Wendy Adelson's brother. But do you think Katie's guilty? Or is Luis just trying to destroy Sigfredo Garcia's girl's life? You can see Wendy Adelson's and Luis Rivera's interrogations right here at Crime Circus. In court, we're almost at 100,000 subscribers, and we'll get there even sooner if you keep spreading the word of this channel. Tell your friends, family, and social media people all about the crime circus. Anyways, let's see what Katie has to say for herself on the stand. This is Katie's story. She's facing questioning from her attorney here. Was, clear, was it clear to you that they considered you a suspect? Yes, ma'am. Did they at any time after that try to get you to come in or talk to you? No, ma'am. Did they ever offer you a state subpoena like they did with Wendy Adelson to get mm. you to come in? No, ma'am. All right. So you're just in the dark? Yes, ma'am. There was a 2020 special that was released to the media, right? Yes, ma'am. Were you out at that time? Yes, ma'am. Well, I, I believe it was Sigfredo's attorney that told me that there was going to be something on 2020. And I was like, in tw like, what do you mean? Like a national, like a national news? Mm -hmm. And he's like, yes, you know, just tune in. I watched it and I didn't even know that they were following me because there was surveillance on that video where I was staying at and my brothers. And I was just like, I started freaking out because my, you know, with the child, with my children, my niece and nephew, like, I don't know if it was safe where we, you know, even where we were staying at. Okay. And did that show basically lay you out as being a middle person in this homicide? Yes, ma'am. All right. Did anyone from 2020 try to reach out to you to find out any information? From no, ma'am. Now, at the end of that episode, there was mm -hmm. the two hosts came on yes, and they said, we just received information that Luis Rivera is cooperating. Yes, ma'am. You remember that, right? Yes, ma'am. Then you and I talked after that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. If you were involved, you would have probably freaked out if you heard that, right? Yes, ma'am. That's sustained. Now, that was in September of 2016, right? Yes, ma'am. They released this thing in the media. Your name is tarnished. And when is the next time that you have, and that something happens to you in regards to this case? When I got arrested. All right. So let's talk about that day. Yes, ma'am. Where did you just come from? I had just dropped off my, well, I had a ballet recital for my daughter. Mm -hmm. And my son, thankfully, wanted to stay with my mom at that time. So I went with Kaylee to the ballet recital. And then I, she wanted to go to her cousin's house, which was Sigfredo's mother's house, because all her other cousins were there. So I dropped her off there. That's a day you remember very clearly, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And... You had actually sent a message to Tallahassee Police Department through your attorney that if you ever get a warrant, you'll voluntarily turn yourself just, in. Just to let you know, and I'll come in. Okay. On October 1st, describe for the jury how it is that the police pulled you over and how many of them there were. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy because I was in, in the shopping plaza 
like I had to get a couple of stuff for the kids. Um, I just, I think, oh no, I already got the food and dropped that, dropped it off at his mom's house. And then I came back out and I went to the plaza to get some stuff. And as I, I was leaving the plaza, like there was a little bit of congestion in one area. So mm-hmm. I was just like, maybe something happened or whatever. What car were you driving? I was driving the Lexus. Okay. Continue. Yes. So I, as I was leaving the plaza, they just like, swarms of like guys just had all these guns pointed at me telling me stop the car stop the car so I put up my hands because at that time there was a lot of shootings that was happening Mm -hmm. like so the officers would like just shoot if they thought that you were you know like you were doing something yeah so I put up my hands and they're like put it on park put it on park so I parked the car and then I got out and I was like that's when I was so nervous that I really urinated on myself and that's from just the way it it's because of all these guns coming at well, you. You yeah, thought you were going to get shot. There was, I mean, they had, like, the the big guns, and they were all pointing it at me, a whole bunch of, like, SWAT team. Broward SWAT, right? I believe so. Did you know that they wanted to arrest Charles Adelson? Yes, ma'am. All right. Charles Adelson has been free up until a month ago. Yes, ma'am. All right. Back in 2019, when I asked you, do you think he's guilty? Yes, ma'am. What did you say? After seeing everything, yes. To this day, do you think he's guilty? Yes, ma'am. Do you believe that he should be prosecuted for his involvement in the murder of Dan Markell? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you think he should come forward and let the jury know that you had nothing to do with this? Yes, ma'am. That, I'm, that's why I just don't understand why I'm still doing this right now when he just got arrested a month ago. And I said on the last trial, well, after seeing all of this, you should arrest him. And still nothing until, I guess, I don't know, it's the Dolce Vita video. This is Katie being confronted by the prosecutor. Will she get caught in her lies? All right, so I want to talk about what you just talked about with your attorney. Yes, ma'am. Um, you said that you and Char- Charlie Adelson were together in July of 2014, right? Yes, ma'am. No, Did- July 2014? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And then you broke up in August, you said? I believe so. Okay. And then you became friends after that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then you became his personal assistant in September of 2014? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so that's that all goes on in the matter of those two months, July to September 2014? Yes, ma'am. If you're someone's personal assistant, you have to see or talk to them every day, right? See and talk to them every day? Mm-hmm. Talk to them on the phone, but right. not have to see them. Okay. Did you and Charlie continue to talk on the phone every day, multiple times a day, since you were his personal assistant? Multiple times a day? I don't remember. Well, every day then? I don't remember if it's every day. Okay. Well, how often would you talk to him? Um, I don't know. Do you have, like, phone record? No, um, I'm just asking you, what's your memory of how often you talk to him? From 2014? Mm-hmm. When you um, became his personal assistant. I don't know how often I was talking to him. How would, I mean, if you're working for him and being his personal assistant, you said Whenever you were, he would call me, so, I mean, I... Is that some, it's everyday duties that you had? He was calling, I, I don't know how long, how often he was calling me. That's why I don't want to answer, like, a wrong amount or a wrong number. Okay. Well, you were getting paid every 10 days for your work, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you would have regular work and you'd have regular contact with him during all of your pay periods? Not regular contact, no. I don't know how many times he would call me during the week. Okay. And he had just broken up with you two months before that. We, like I said, like I was telling uh, Ms. Mm-hmm. Kawas that I never had like a definitive date when we stopped like talking. Sometime between the murder though and when you became his personal assistant, he broke up with you though. That was your testimony? Like it was dwindling down like our, our relationship. I Meaning guess. that he was ghosting you? That's what Something your like that? attorney yeah. said in her opening statement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Why would he want you working as his personal assistant if he was ghosting you? Well, I told you that he need I needed that favor for my the insurance purposes. That's why I put that I was working for him. Uh-huh. And you needed that favor though. You needed that favor. And you asked him for that favor actually 
actually in June of 2014, didn't you? If that's what the records show. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Looking at this, you asked him for this waiver. Baby, I need your help with employment. I have to send it to BCF for my kids' insurance. Also, if I end up moving, I need to show up working for you or else I won't be able to get an apartment. That was in June of 2014, right? Yes, ma'am. June 24th, actually, right in between the trips uh, to Tallahassee to commit this murder, right? Say the dates again. June 24th, that's in between the June Tallahassee trip and the July Tallahassee trip? I believe so. That you asked for this favor for him? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then you guys were together at the time that you asked this favor, right? I believe so. Right, but he didn't put you on the payroll in June, did he? No, I don't think I was on the payroll till September, you said? So that was a favor that he did for you after he broke up with you, you're saying? We never really broke up, like, I guess when we stopped having, like, that type of relationship. Right. You were no longer intimate with each other? Not that I could recall. Okay. You said that y'all broke up sometime after the murder of Dan Markell, and then about in May, that's when you got together with Sigfredo Garcia, right? I got in 2015. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes, yeah. But you said that... In August, that's when he broke up with you. I don't know the dates that when we stopped, or not stopped, but like when our communication dwindled down in the relationship. Okay. You yeah. asked him for that favor in June when y'all were definitely together, though. I believe so. And he ghosted you after the murder of Dan Markell. That's what the argument is, right? Okay. Um, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. But at the same time that you're saying he ghosted you, you're also saying he asked you to become his personal assistant. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Does that make any sense? I needed the help to get my kids insurance. I don't... Why would he want his ex-girlfriend, who he doesn't talk to and he's ghosting, to become his personal assistant? He talks to his other ex-girlfriends. No, I'm I said, why is he asking... Why is he ghosting you, but asking you to become his personal assistant? Because I'm asking him for the favor so that I can... Right, but at this point, y'all are broken up. What is when that? he puts you on the Adelson Institute payroll, right? Why? We stayed as friends. We we were friends. Okay. So that's your, he puts you on the Adelson Institute as a favor to a friend? Yes. To their payroll. Okay. The other employees of the Adelson Institute, so though they said that, you know, you didn't work there. So yes, that's why you're saying that you worked remotely, you worked at home, that's your testimony? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And... Charlie Adelson, we hear him in the recordings saying, oh, well, you clean the office on the weekends, but you're telling us you actually did not do that. No, ma'am. Right? Okay. So why didn't you go into the office? Why were you working from home? Like, what was so different about you? What was so different about me? Mm -hmm. So my whole purpose was to get insurance for my kids. I just, I didn't, like... I, and he, whenever he asked me to do some stuff, like, I would do it. Like, I told you the site... And I don't remember, I can't recall a lot of the things from 2014. That's why I don't know how to really answer your question. Well, as his remote personal assistant, I mean, what exactly did you do for him? You said earlier you set up appointments for him, mm -hmm. right? And you looked at rental places for him? Yes, ma'am. He had owned properties and like he was telling me to collect from those properties. Okay. From the property. So let's take had. those one by one, yes, setting up appointments. Did you actually schedule any patients? No, not scheduled uh, um, patients on the thing. It's for the site, like his website. So you did not schedule patients? No, ma'am. Okay. What appointments did you set up for him? I can't recall. Okay. What type of appointments if they weren't scheduling patients? I, I can't recall. You don't know what type of appointments you set no, up for him? Okay. But you did not schedule patients? Not that I can recall. So no. it wouldn't have been for his work as a dentist? Kind of getting confused about your question. His work as a dentist was he did dental work on patients. Right? Yeah, I can't recall the patients that I've called or which ones I've scheduled back in 2014. I'm not asking you for specifics. I'm just saying what type of appointments did you set up for him if you didn't schedule patients? What I, other I types you, of I appointments? I didn't do this, the appointments. I did it for the site. Like his appointments for other, like if other things that he needed to do, not for patients in the office. Okay, so you were not scheduling patients. You were not 
This isn't the office website you're talking about? Yes, the office website. Okay, what type of appointments are you putting on the office website that are not patients? He just needed to, well, like to take the pictures for his office and his website. Right. Yeah, that's, that's what I was setting up the appointment for. You set up an appointment for him to get his website done yes. by a company that does websites. Yes, like my friend that was doing the website, yes. That is the appointment that you set up yes, for him. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and that is one appointment you're saying that, that you set up I for him. That I can remember, yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. And so you earned over $800 a month, over $17,000 over the course of a year and a half, for setting up one appointment with him one time to get his website set up. I don't remember all of the specifics of stuff that he's asked me to do. Okay. That's the only one that you can think that, of. I mean, like right now, yes. Okay. Well, your defense is that you're not involved in this murder, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It, it, and you said it, it seems like Charlie Adelson is, obviously, huh? Yes, ma'am. And your children's father, obviously, is too, right? And you're caught in the middle of it? Yes, ma'am. All right. And if you're collecting money from Charlie Adelson for no legitimate purpose, that looks suspicious. It looks like he's paying you for or keeping you happy for your part in this murder, doesn't it? No, ma'am. Okay. If you're doing something to earn those payments, then that no longer would seem suspicious, right? Well, I, I just don't understand when it's like you're talking about like the checks, right? If, right. If you're doing something to earn that money, that would no longer seem suspicious. I don't, I'm not understanding your question. My question is, you're telling this jury that yes, you did something or you set up some type of appointments for him, but it was not scheduling patients. The only thing that you can tell us today that you ever set up for him, though, is one time you that I can called recall. a website company <laughs> to have his website, him to have an appointment with him for them to set up his website. Isn't that true? That I can recall, yes, ma'am. Okay. And in that message, that act actually in August of 2014, that was a month before you started getting paychecks from the Adelson Institute, wasn't it? What was the message? About, hey, I called this person and he'll do your website. That was in August of 2014, wasn't That's it? That's what the text message showed. Okay. So that was before you ever received a paycheck from the Adelson Institute. Wasn't July, it? August. If August is before September. September. I believe so. Okay. Did you keep up with his schedule? I mean, you'd have to know his schedule to be able to schedule patients, right? Or to set up appointments for him, I mean? That's what you keep talking about, like these appointments. I can't remember things that I was doing back in 2014. I'm not asking I, don't, I didn't have specifics. like a schedule right. of his like daily activities and stuff so I didn't I would just call him if or he would call me if he needed me to do something okay did you keep up with him though and his schedule in order to be able to make appointments for him keep up with him like see what his other appointment know what's were? going on with him my boss is here today he's there today he's on vacation today he's working this week you would have to know his schedule in order to be able to set up appointments I for don't him know right his definitive schedule at that time but I mean like I told you he would just text me what if he needed me to do something okay and how often would that be I don't recall okay I mean you would have some idea you're you would have some idea of what's going on with his work schedule if your job that you're getting paid $800 a month for is to set up appointments for him right like I said, I don't know how often he would text me. Whenever he would text me and he would ask me to do something, then I would do it. It was like odd jobs. It wasn't a specific, oh, call this patient or do this. Okay. I mean, isn't it true you had no idea what was going on with his schedule to set up any type of appointment for him or his work, no, right? I would just text him and be like, okay, are you going to be free for this X, Y, and Z if I needed to? But not that I can recall. I want to ask you about this. You were working as a personal assistant, making that money, only set up the one appointment that you can think of, and you're having to check in with him. How's work? How's your love life? What's going on with you? You're not keeping up with his schedule either, are you? They said I didn't have his definitive schedule of what he does. 
he needs help and he needs he needs to text me and he needs me to do something, he'll text me and let me do something. Well, you also said that you helped him with tenants of his properties. Yes. Ma'am. What did you do with the properties? He had a couple of properties at that time. I don't remember what location or where it is, but he had asked me to collect like the yeah the tenants pay- the the monthly payment. And, like, they had, like, washers and dryers there, too. And, like, you'd have to open it up and, like, get, like, whatever coins are in there. Okay. So you collected rent from these tenants? Yes. So I want to ask you about a prior statement that you made. I just gave you a, tr- a transcript of that particular day. Yes, ma'am. When you were asked in, in October of 2019, would you be responsible for collecting rent? You said initially he wanted me to try to collect rent, but those tenants were so difficult, so I just didn't do it. Isn't that true? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you didn't actually collect rent? No, he wanted me to collect it. Well, obviously here it says that I didn't. Right. And today, though, you're saying that you did. I said he wanted to. He wanted me to collect. I don't even remember what I just said. Right. I just asked you if you collected rent, and you said you did. And that was a lie, wasn't it? I just said I didn't in this testimony. Okay. And if you said that you collected rent from him today... And you previously said that you did not collect rent from his tenants. He wanted you to do it, but you never did it. That's a lie, right? I should have told you to refresh my memory instead of saying that. Okay, was that a yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Why did he do this favor for you? To give you over $17,000 over the course of a year and a half him and his parents' business. I needed to do it for the insurance for my kids, and I had to put it on a bracket that I can apply for that. I understand why you needed it. Why would he do that for you? That's my question. Because he had a business. He had that office. Right, but it you're not doing a service for him though, right? You you only set up the one appointment and you didn't actually collect rents from the tenants. So why would he do this for you if you're not actually earning that money? Objection speculation. I asked him for that favor for the insurance. I understand why you needed it. I don't know. My question is, why did he do it for you? I don't know, ma'am. Isn't it because he's keeping you happy because you did a really big favor for him no, in July ma'am. of 2014? No, ma'am. And you did hang that over his head, though, sometimes, didn't you? Hang what over The fact that he, you had done a really big favor for him. Not that I can recall. I mean, you weren't doing much of anything for him, right? He was the one giving you all this money. And I told you it was, I, I did the whole purpose for that, was for the insurance for my children. I know, but I'm, my point is, he hadn't done anything for you. You were the one, do, he was the one paying you the money. You weren't doing anything for him. He was doing everything for you, right? He was doing that as a favor for me. Right, so what are you talking about here that's something that you've done for him? Do you have the rest of the text? Because that's just like a portion of it. It doesn't say that day. You're just talking about he's being mean to you and you're saying don't be such a dick to someone who's done something for you. I don't know what I was referring to. Okay. Um, And that favor, you say it was... To get insurance, and you're talking about Medicaid is what you were trying to get? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And when you get insurance through Medicaid, the taxpayers are paying for that, right? Yes, ma'am. Right. That's all of us, yes, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people need Medicaid. It's a serious thing, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. But you were getting Medicaid at the same time that you were paying thousands and thousands of dollars in cash for a boob job. Right, well, I've already saved up for that. That was a long term, like pain, like for the insurance was a long term for my for my son because he has a disability. I understand you said that, but I'm I'm just saying you and were you, getting Medicaid at the same time that you were paying thousands and thousands of dollars in cash for a boob job, right? That I've saved up for, yes, ma'am. Okay, you had a you say you saved up for it, but you had a a habit of depositing money into the bank. We saw all your cash deposits by day, and you deposit, I mean, sometimes multiple, multiple deposits every day in the bank of all of different cash, in different banks, in cash, okay. So you make all those deposits in cash every day, sometimes at different banks, multiple times a day, right? 
at different banks at the same day? Yeah, you deposit a lot of cash in the bank. You do it sometimes, it's not just like a once a month thing. You do it almost daily. Sometimes you do it at multiple different banks in a day. If that's what the records show, I don't remember what I was doing. At that but point. you're saying for this particular breast augmentation, you did not deposit that money. You kept that at home. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And it was just all the other money that you had you deposited in the bank, except for that. I've already saved up for, for my breast augmentation. So that's a yes. You and deposited all your other money into the bank, except for the cash for the breast augmentation. I, whenever I would have money with me and I would, from working from the club, then I would save up and then I'd deposit whatever I had. Charlie Adelson, he also gave you other gifts, right? Besides just, it, that wasn't the only benefit, being on the Adelson Institute payroll. I mean, he paid for a trip to Santa Domingo for you, right? And the kids. Okay. And that's the, the Dominican Republic, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. And that was in 2015 after you and Charlie Adelson broke up? If that's what the record shows, I don't remember what date it was. Okay. He's also called in prescriptions for you, right? Charlie has? Who has? As a I, favor? I We're talking about the favors. We talked about the trip to Santa oh, Domingo, oh. offering you and your mom a cruise, the car repairs. He also called in a prescription for you, right? Called in prescriptions in the past? Prescriptions? Right. I I guess so. I don't I don't recall that such a long time ago. Okay. Do you remember him paying for a catered fit meal service for you? Um if you can refresh my memory. You don't remember that? Can't remember. All right. And then he also gave you cash. For when you would ask him for help or ask him for loans, he would give you cash. Do you have any text messages that show? I just showed you the one oh, about... Well, for that one, yes. Right. Okay. And those things that I was showing you, all of those things in 2015, that's after you and Charlie Adelson broke up. I believe so. And you heard June say, you were here during trial, that after they broke up, they were together for seven years, he didn't give her any gifts like that. What makes you so special that he's giving you these gifts after you broke after he broke up? I with think you? she did mention she was getting gifts from. He him. said a little something, not a trip, cash. You looked into car repairs. Records? No, I'm asking oh. you. <laughs> what was so special about you that he's giving you all these gifts know, after you broke up? I don't know, man. That you're referring that you had records for her too. No, I'm asking you why you were so special I, that he's I giving you the gifts, and you don't know. I don't know. So not just to keep you happy, keep you quiet? No. Where were you working in July of 2014? I don't recall where I was working. Okay, so you can't tell us anywhere you were working? Not that I've known. Like, Do you, you have any work? records of where I was? No, I don't. And now I'm asking. Where were you working? I, I, don't, I don't recall. That was where back in 2014. I don't recall. Where did this money come from? I don't recall where I was working or if Secreto gave me money on 2014. You don't remember whether it's money that you earned or money that you gave me? No, ma'am. I wish I could remember, but I don't know okay. where from 2014. Twice as much money over tried to get money. Has it came another month? I wish I could remember. I don't even remember what I did yesterday. You don't remember. <laughs> Thousand two hundred dollars in your account in August of 2014. No, ma'am. You don't re remember depositing seventeen thousand from the day of Dan Martel's murder to the end of August 2014. No, ma'am. When I look at the records that you guys have, it's it's crazy. Even when I to see how how you guys put it and make it out to be like on my account. Wouldn't that be a memorable thing for you if all of a sudden exactly, it you would got be... over twice the amount of money you would normally have? That would definitely be memorable. I mean, before before July of 2014, you hadn't deposited you hadn't deposited five thousand dollars even close since January of 2013, over a year and a half before. Ma'am, I wish I knew and I could re recall and remember, but I don't. And then over the course of these three months, you got over five thousand here. Over thirteen thousand here, over five thousand again here, and you're saying you have no 
memory of depositing that money or any idea where it came from. I don't have a recollection. And you don't think that's something that you would remember? I would remember that, but I don't have any recollection of, of that date. Okay, you can't tell us, though, anywhere you were working in July of 2014. I can't remember. I can't okay. recall. Okay, and, all right, so with this wire, Charlie Adelson gets contacted by his mom. She says she was given paperwork, which turns out to be this article about the murder. She says this TV probably cost $5,000. You agree with me that TV sounds like their code for this murder, right? Objection, lack of personal knowledge. Overruled, overruled, if you know. I don't know, man. Then Donna Adelson tells Charlie that it has to do with the two of them and the man mentioned an ex-girlfriend, right? Yes, ma'am. And then Charlie calls you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Why did he call you? I have no idea. You don't know? No, ma'am. I don't know if that's before or after or when he spoke to his mom or when they mentioned my name. Or when he said ex-girlfriend, like it's been going round and round, I'm confused myself. Okay, and you said that in your last testimony, I'm looking at page 154, lines 4 through 9. Yes, was, I was saying that I'm his last ex-girlfriend. That's what you said in 2019, right? Yes, ma'am. That you were his last ex-girlfriend. Yes, to my okay. knowledge, yes. We've had... Testimony during this trial though, that he's had several girlfriends since you dated though, yeah. between that and the bump, right? Yeah, that's, but I was explaining here that I'm his last ex-girlfriend like I was his he was dating June I think at that time mm -hmm. So I didn't know about Whitney. So I was his last ex-girlfriend. You didn't know about Whitney? No, I just I heard about it now. Wasn't that like his first serious girlfriend after you and him broke up? I don't know. I that's why I'm getting confused because I'm learning so many things from here that I don't know when I knew that that was his girlfriend or I knew of that girlfriend. I I know about June because she testified over here. You knew that he was talking to lots of girls. Yes, ma'am. And dating lots of girls. Yes, ma'am. And you would actually chastise him in in the messages about like him dating so many girls, moving them into his house, letting them drive his cars, right? Yes, ma'am. And you would check in with him about these girls. So you would say, you know, are you still talking to this girl, right? Uh, I might have mentioned it, but just to say it, you'd have to show me. Okay. In December of 2015, you say, are you still talking to the lame chick, the girl who's hot and really not? And he says, yes, or I'm still seeing her. Yeah, but I don't know which one that is. Okay. I guess my point is, you know that you you knew that you were not his last ex-girlfriend. I to my knowledge, I was his last ex-girlfriend because he was dating June. Mm -hmm. Didn't really know I didn't know about Whitney. I don't know if I've learned it from from trial. But I was his last ex-girlfriend. If he was dating June and he dated me, I'm his last ex-girlfriend. Well, by your own admission, in the wiretap call, you say you've had a million ex-girlfriends, right? I understand that, but I'm saying I'm his last ex-girlfriend. We're talking about this. Right. But he had, you and him had broken up in the fall of 2014. And this bump is in the spring of 2016, right? You'd been together with Sigfredo Garcia again for a year at that point, at the time of the bomb. At that point, okay. Right. He had dated tons of girls in between that, right? I believe so. Okay. You were not his last ex-girlfriend then. But I'm saying from the timeline from June, like June, the girl June. Right. I was his last ex-girlfriend. We were talking about it in here. Like, you're talking about the, wasn't this from the bump? was from October. From of the bump? No. The like, transcript you're looking at is from October of 2019 when you say you were his last ex-girlfriend at the time of the bump. That's what you said last time was the reason that he called you when an ex-girlfriend was mentioned. But and that's you, what I'm saying. But you're you're talking about a specific date on this, what's going on right now, too. This is not, not on the 19th. This is the transcripts from the 19th. Right. I'm saying, though, that you knew you were not his last ex-girlfriend. Isn't that true? I'm confused because I'm saying that I was his last ex-girlfriend. What are you talking okay. about from when we were talking in Dolce Vita? Right. 
So you okay. thought you thought that you were his last ex girlfriend. Objection. Before. Acts and I'm so objection. So you can ask it one more time. Yes, sir. Do you believe you were his last ex girlfriend yes, before the bump, and that's the reason he called you? Yes, ma'am. And he called you because he wanted you to deal with this for him, right? I don't know if this is the reason why he had mentioned my name and why he wanted me to call. Okay, well, even before, though, that you knew your name was mentioned, you were willing to help him with the problem, right? I was listening to him. I don't know at that moment if I was saying that I was willing to help him. I want you to look at your that same page, 154, lines 17 through 19. In 2019, you said, before your name was mentioned, you were willing to help him with that problem. I said, I said yes, ma'am. And you're asked by Charlie Adelson to call this number. You don't know why he's asking you to do this other than you're his last ex-girlfriend. You, and then the person that you get to call the number coincidentally just happens to be the shooter of the crime that Charlie Adelson thinks he's being blackmailed for, right? I mean, can you ask your question one more time? You were asked by Charlie Adelson to call this number yes. on the article. Yes. You got someone else to do that for you, right? Yeah, I asked Sick Fredo to do Fredo. it. So you coincidentally get the person who was the shooter of this crime that Charlie Adelson's being blackmailed. I mean, right? I was just asking Sick Fredo to call the number. Okay, and just coincidentally, he also, he's the shooter. I didn't even know about any of that until the trial. Okay, so that is a coincidence. I, if they, in your opinion, I believe so. All right. Um... I, no, I don't think it's a coincidence. I'm saying you're saying that that's a coincidence. You didn't actually have anything to do with it. No, ma'am. And you didn't actually know what it was about or who you were getting to call for that reason, anything? No, ma'am. Other than the fact that they said um, Katie and Tutho. Yeah, and when, when Charlie Adelson told you that his mom said it has to do with Tuto and Tato. Why didn't you say, you know exactly who that is, Charlie. Tudo is Sigfredo. No, he was saying it in different ways. And then that's why I'm, I never corrected him. I know like they've asked me about that before. I didn't know that I had to correct them and say, well, you know him. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, the father of my kids. Like, why are you saying the name different? And he said that though multiple times. He said, I don't even know who Tudo is. He said that on the phone and he said that in Dolce Vita, didn't he? Um, on the phone, I think I heard it, but on the Dolce Vita, I don't remember. And you just, though, you just didn't correct him, just didn't ask why I he just didn't, like he didn't know who Tudo was. That's the whole reason why I'm even in here, because I wasn't asking the questions. Why don't you ever mention Garcia's name to Charlie Adelson? Why don't I ever mention his name? Right. Like the Tuto? No, why don't you ever say Tudo or Garcia to Charlie Adelson? Why do you just say he this, he that? I never mention his name to him. Right. Why not? I just don't. Like, I'm not going to be, like, saying, I don't know. I just, I didn't. Why don't you ever mention Charlie's name to Sigfredo Garcia? I've always referred to him like my friend or vice versa. Like, I always say my friend. I don't think they want to hear about each other's name whenever I'm mentioning them. So whenever you talk to Garcia about Charlie Adelson, you always say that person or my friend. Or my friend, yeah. Okay. I mean, if you, if you called him and were talking to him about that person... How does he know who you're talking about? Did I did I ever message him saying that person? In the wiretap call, yeah. You were you are talking to Sigfredo Garcia and referring to Charlie as that person. I, I don't recall. Why don't you just say Charlie? I never mentioned either one of their names because, I don't know, I just never, I just didn't. I mean, isn't the reason, though, that you never say their names is because you were all afraid that law enforcement might be listening? Well, apparently everybody had a burner phone, so why would anybody even be talking on the phone? Charlie called you. Charlie said that he wanted the problem fluffed. That problem was this bad guy that was Objection, trying... Objection, not in evidence. Overruled. 
that was trying to extort his mom? That was a joke. Okay. Um, but he wanted you, you were the person that he wanted to take care of this problem, right? Yes, because somebody mentioned my name. We've right. We've gone over this. Out of all the people in the world, though, he chose you. And you're saying that... Because they mentioned my name. Okay. Today... And I'm, Tuto's name. And then mentioned Tato's name. So, yeah, that's why I was confused. All right. What happened in the car before y'all went to Dolce Vita? I don't even recall that. That's what I was asking when they said that there's a 10-minute meet up in a car. Like, where's that video or where's that? Did he search you for a wire? You saw him Charlie? Right? Charlie? Yeah. No, because I don't even recall that happening. All right. When did you find out that Dan Markell was murdered? I believe I found that when, when Sigfredo got arrested. Okay, so that was the first time that you'd ever heard of Dan Markell, his brother-in-law, being murdered. Yes, ma'am. Charlie Adelson never told you that? No, ma'am. And you and him talk all the time? Not all the time. You'll see the phone records. It shows. I've seen them, and y'all talk all the time. You were just telling me earlier that, like, our conversations stop, like, dwindle down. No, I was saying that you said that he was ghosting you. Okay. Okay. You and Charlie Adelson talk all the time, right? I guess so. Okay. And when Sigfredo, I mean, he never mentioned to you that Dan Markell had been murdered. No, ma'am. What was it that you thought he was saying that made national news, BBC News, Good Morning America? What was, he talking? Who's, what was who saying? What was Charlie Adelson talking about? What made I national don't know. News? I didn't even know what BBC was. You know what Good Morning America is, Yes, though, right? I, I, I know that, but I didn't. It wasn't anything that was, like, popping out. He never mentioned Dan Markell. He never mentioned Tallahassee. He never mentioned anything about a murder. Those things would stick out. Right. I would think that they would. But he didn't talk about that. I'm telling you. And Why he, didn't you ask? I mean, what, what was on Good Morning America? What was on national news? I don't remember what happened. I mean, we have the whole video, and it didn't right, even pick up anything I said. to you what he was talking about. He didn't explain anything. He was saying scenarios. Okay. In the Dolce Vita video, he's saying it's either somebody trying to blackmail his family or it's the cops working undercover. That's Why right. would it be the police? Why would the police be investigating his family? I don't know. Why isn't your first question, why in the world would the cops be running an undercover investigation on your family? I don't even know if I ever mentioned that. I don't know. Don't remember what happened in 2014. You were asked, why would it be the cops? Page 155, lines 3 through 11. You were asked why it would be the cops. You said, I don't know, because he's always talking about the cops. Mm -hmm. You were asked, but didn't you ask him why the cops would be running an undercover operation on his mother? And you said, no, ma'am. So I didn't ask. Right. You didn't ask. Why yeah. wouldn't you ask? Why would the cops be running an investigation on your family? I don't know. That's what I. That's the whole reason of why he was meeting up with me, because he doesn't even know what was going on. Now I see that he did. Right. I mean, we're not talking about him, though. I'm saying... You didn't ask why his, the, his, the cops would be running an undercover investigation on his family, did you? Well, no, ma'am. Okay. And this may be the third time objection asked and answered. All right, that was asked and answered. Okay. Let's move on. I want to ask you about this Dolce Vita video. Yes, ma'am. All right, so Charlie Adelson says in that clip... Oh, objection, that Judge. As to what Charlie Adelson said? Overruled. This is, uh, she can give her interpretation. It's up to the jury to decide, but she can ask the question. When he says at the very beginning of that clip, if they had any evidence, we'd already be gone to the airport by now. Objection. What did you understand? I didn't hear that. Overruled. I didn't even hear anything that the, the recording was saying. You didn't hear like any I did, of that? I didn't hear anything that you, like the line that you just said, I did not hear that on the recording. When that recording started, you didn't hear him say, if they had any evidence, we would have already gone to the no, airport by now. So you had no idea of what he was talking about, evidence of what? I don't know, ma'am. If he did say that, what evidence of what? I wouldn't know. I don't know what I said. Okay, so 
in the next statement when he's saying, if they bug your phone, you're still not talking about any of this? I mean, what are you not talking about? I don't know what he's talking about. You couldn't hear anything that he said? No, ma'am. Okay. Maybe my volume. You're at the beginning of the clip that time when he says, if we had any evidence, we would have already gone to the airport by now? Uh, the only thing I caught was bug phone. Okay. I, I didn't hear anything in the beginning. If he had said to you, if they had any evidence, we'd already be gone to the airport by now, what was he talking about? Evidence of what? I have no idea. I told you he was saying scenarios, and I can't remember what he was talking about at that time. So he wouldn't have been trying to ease your mind, let you know if this is the cops, they don't have anything on us? No. When he says, if, even if they bug your phone, and at the end he says, you still have not been talking about this. I didn't, what have you not been talking about on your phone? I didn't hear anything that said anything about me not talking on the phone. When, they, when he was talking about, even if they bug this, even if they bug your phone, okay. at the end of the clip, he says, you still have not been talking about this. So even if your phone is bugged, you're but still not talking about But is he implying to me, like, he's, he might have been saying scenarios. You guys are keep taking things out of context, and it's not, I don't even know. I can't answer that question if I don't know the whole thing. Okay, so I'm, I'm telling you what I'm hearing on here, and I'm asking you about it. What you're, you're hearing? Judge, that's uh, improper. All right, I don't want to get argumentative. You've already asked and answered that question. Let's yes, sir. move on. You never went to Tallahassee, did you? No, ma'am. And you never shot anybody, did you? No, ma'am. I want to play the next clip for you. <clears throat> He's telling you there that you have to be able to put the person at the scene at the time in order to prove a crime. You can't just say, oh, my brother did it, or oh, I shot JFK. You've got to have evidence. That's what he's telling you, right? Okay. Is that, that's what he's telling you, right? I mean, that's what I said on the recording. What is he talking about? I have no idea. That's what I'm telling you. He keeps talking in scenarios. I don't know what he's talking about. Right. And last time when you when you testified in 2019, you said that he was just talking in scenarios. You didn't have any specific member memory about what. Exactly. Right? I didn't remember anything specific. Right. Your attorney asked you today whether if last time you explained what was in the Dolce Vita video, yes, what you explained was that you remember him talking about scenarios. You didn't know what they were. You didn't have any specific memory of that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and you don't know why he's trying, he's letting you know that, hey, in order to prove a crime, they have to put the person at the scene of a crime. You don't know why. I don't know why. And that one he tells you, if this person went to the cops, they're going to be asked, you know, well, where's the weapon? Did you witness it? No, you just heard a rumor. Well, that's worth zero. You have to get them on a wire. You have to get the person to confess. Outside of that, there's no evidence. That's what you heard, right? Um, parts of it, yes, ma'am. Okay. And he's saying, right, that if you guys all keep quiet, no one's going to have any evidence of you, right? I didn't know what he was talking about. I didn't know what he was talking. He's saying scenarios over and over. Why is he talking to this about about this with you? I don't know. What is he saying the cops aren't going to have evidence of? I have no idea. You had no clue? No. And you didn't ask either, did you? That's your testimony. I don't remember what we were talking about or if I asked him. I mean, I'm re I hear myself responding, but... Right, but you, you did say that you never asked why the cops would be running this undercover investigation, right? I believe so. You were in this Prius that Garcia and Rivera rented for the July trip to Tallahassee. You were in it at some point, right? No, ma'am. You never sat in it? Never sat in it. Never rode with Garcia just to get food or something? No, ma'am. All right. The father of your children was in that Prius, though, right? Well, with the, with the picture that they've showed, you see, yeah, he was in that Prius. Okay. And... In this video, Charlie Adelson is giving you examples of how just because a person was in a car that someone used to commit a crime, that doesn't mean anything, right? On what video? On the Dolce Vita video. I don't recall that part. Okay. So here in those two clips we listened to, he was saying you have to be able to put the person at the scene at the time, not in the car. Let's say you sat in the car, right? Then I go commit a crime, but your DNA is in there. And I said, Katie was in my car and she did this horrible crime. 
okay, they get your DNA in the car, and it, okay, okay, Katie was in the car. No, that means Katie sat in the car for two minutes and got out. Katie has nothing to do with me robbing Burger King. That's what you heard, right? Um, parts of it, yes, ma'am. Okay, and then he gives you another rental car example. He said, if you have a car and you can link this person to renting that car that's used at the scene of the crime, you also have to prove who was driving that day. You know, they could have rented it and lent it to a friend. Then he gives you another one, doesn't he? He says, you rent a car and I ask to borrow it. I drive to Orlando, rob a McDonald's and come back. Yeah, you rented it, but you were out. You didn't even know I took your car. Doesn't, isn't that what you heard? Parts of it, yes. Why is he giving you so many rental car examples? I wish I knew. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's saying scenarios. Don't you think it's kind of odd? Why is he saying all those scenarios in front of other people or whatever? If, like, apparently, if he thought that I was, what, what did you say earlier, that I'm wearing a wire? No, I think that he didn't think you were wearing a wire. I think he thought that y'all were in a loud restaurant, and he's trying to ease your mind. And he's t yeah. saying to you, right, that he's saying... But why is he... He keeps explaining himself, like, and he says, I don't have anything to do with it. Why is he trying to convince me that he has nothing to do with it when right, I don't right, know right. what he's... I'm going to stop I'm this. sorry. Okay. She's going to ask the questions and you're going to respond, okay? He is trying to ease your mind because the car that Garcia and Rivera rented to drive up here and kill Dan Markell had been on the news, right? I don't know of that. You were nervous that police might be able to connect them to having rented it or been in that car, weren't you? Why would I be nervous? I never even knew of it. You never knew that the car was on the news? I knew from when Sigfredo got arrested, and I think they put a picture of that, of the Prius. He was trying to tell you in that video that it doesn't matter if they rented a certain car or were seen in a certain car. Police have to be able to put them at the scene of the crime at the time, right? That's what he had said on the on the video, but I don't know what he was talking about. So he's just talking about that. You have no he's idea. He's giving why. different scenarios. Okay. One of the scenarios he gave was he said, you know, it could be the cops, you know, trying to run an undercover investigation, or it could be somebody trying to blackmail his family. That was the other scenario, right? Yes, ma'am. Why did he think somebody would be extorting money from his family? I don't know. That's what he was trying to figure out. Wouldn't you be curious as to why someone was trying to blackmail his family? Would I be curious? Right. I was curious. That's why I sat there and I listened. Right. But you never asked him, why would somebody be trying to blackmail your family? Why are the cops doing this investigation on your family? I don't know if I asked them at that time or not, because you apparently said in they didn't even... You did not, right? Well, apparently then I don't, I don't, because I don't recall, but if that video said, or like it picked up anything that I was saying, then I would know what I was talking about. Well, you said in 2019 that you did not okay, ever so ask I don't. that, right? And now though, the video is audible, right? And it's pretty obvious you would have known what was going on in Objection. order to listen I to don't. this. Oh, that's, the evidence. All right. Ask a question. Ms. Yes, sir. All right. Let's listen to one more. about 12, 15 seconds in there, you heard him say that, you know, if this was somebody blackmailing his family, this is somebody who knows information. That's what he said to you, right? If that's what he said on the video. Is that what you heard, that this is someone no, who knows No, all I heard, I heard a little bit in the end, um, but I didn't hear the first sent like what you were just saying right now. What is he talking about that these people know information about? I don't know. I keep telling you, I don't even remember. All right, so in that clip, he's saying if there's, if this is a bad guy, there's two ways of dealing with it. We can go ahead and call the police. They'll contact him, arrange a setup, take him down. But then he'll be telling everything he knows, or else he's going to serve 10 years in prison. And the next thing you know, that person's singing, and he's going to start calling your name out. And my parents are going to have to say, they're going to be asked the story of what happened. Isn't that what you heard? I didn't hear that, like not all of everything that you're saying, but like I said, I don't know what he's talking about. Well, you heard him say at the end of that clip that they're going to be calling your name out, that black My name? Right. No. I did not hear that. This bad guy who knows he's going to tell the cops information, why would he be calling your name out? I don't know. All right, got one more. So in that clip, after he explains that this bad guy 
could tell information to the police, could call your name out. He says, this is my idea. And he gives you very precise instructions, doesn't he? And yeah, he was talking about the calling to say, to say it's, um, yeah. He told you to say, my friends have no idea what you're talking about. And frankly, mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about either, but the name sounds familiar who's incarcerated. Yes, ma'am. Whose name did he think sounded familiar? I believe it's because his mom got um, bumped and said that you have to help your friend's Tato or something. Right. Like your brother Tato. I don't know. He's talking about Tato or Tuto. Okay. Um, the name Tato and Tuto were familiar to you. Yes, right? ma'am. And you never had to tell him who Tuto and Tato were. He knew and you knew. Right? I don't know if he knew. Well, yeah, he did. He, know, he knew Tuto's name. Okay. I don't know about Tato. Tato was the one who was incarcerated, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you knew that? I knew he was incarcerated by the feds, but I don't know where he was at. All right, and he said, so I'm going to give you something as charity to help the less fortunate, but do not contact these people again or they're going to the police. The only reason we're doing it is because of karma. And the whole time that you're talking, this is what he's telling you to do, right? Okay. You're, he wants you to say, I don't know what's going on, and only use the words help and charity. Right? Okay. He really didn't want you to give this guy any information about what you knew, did he? Didn't want to give who? The he really didn't want you to give this blackmailer any information about what you knew, right? He's saying, don't say anything else, right? No, he's just tell he's trying to convince me. Now, that, 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 how many times I've listened to it, he's trying to convince me to do this. If I was in any way, shape, or form in this with him, why would he throw me to the cops and tell me to Because say this. you were the ex-girlfriend who took care of this problem for him. You are his connection to these people. He wants you to take care of it. No, they mentioned my right. name. They mentioned Tuto's name. Right. And then they mentioned about a brother being incarcerated, which was Tato. I know. And then he starts so, talking about Sigfredo Garcia right after this, that clip, right, that we just heard. He starts talking to you about Sigfredo Garcia, doesn't he? Refresh my mind. Like, what Charlie was he Adelson saying? Charlie Adelson starts talking to you about Sigfredo Garcia, doesn't he? I don't know who he was talking about. Okay. In that clip we just heard, he's saying, now he's fucking with him, he's fucking with his wife. If he's fucking with the king himself, you better kill him because he's going to be a big problem. He knows who you are. And if he can't do it, have someone else do it. Right? Yeah, but he's not talk it's talking about Tuto there. Like, where? He's not? No. Okay. Well, let's keep listening, but one second. He's telling you, though, in that part that I just talked about, how mad Garcia needs to be about this, right? Some guy is messing with you, putting your name out there as part of this, and you need to kill him or he's going to be a big problem. He either needs to do it or have somebody else do it, right? That's not, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's, I'm, I don't think he's talking about Sigfredo there. Okay. Uh, when, when he says that to you, why, why don't we see you jumping up from the table? Why don't we see you raising your voice saying, whoa, whoa, kill? What are you talking about? We don't. Yeah, I would have said something like that, but I didn't even know what he's saying about kill. Obviously, I didn't react that way because it wasn't something that's like. Well, you heard him say, he better kill him or he's going to be a big problem. Either he can do it or have someone else do it. You heard him say that, right? Part of it, yes, ma'am. Okay. And you didn't jump out and run out of there? No. Okay. You didn't raise your voice and start, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not being a part of anything like this, did you? No, but he, if he's like saying scenarios and he's talking about stuff, like I'm probably not even, like it's it's nothing that like made me like, oh my God, like what are you talking about? Like, why are you even talking? Period. Charlie said, so help me God, if they fuck with my family, it's going to be Nazi shit. This will be done. I mean, Katie, I don't care what I have to spend. I swear to God. Mm -hmm. He's telling you that he needs this guy killed, and he doesn't care what he has to spend. That's Objection. what he's saying, right? Overruled. I mean, if that's what he's saying, I, I, can't, I can't say what he was stating it for. What, what did you understand him to mean when he said that? Charlie's always talking about different. You've heard people say that he's always talking about some weird stuff. Like, that's not something that, like, oh, somebody is messing with his family. I, I get that. And somebody's trying to 
blackmail his mom or whatever, but it's not to the point where I was like, you know, like it didn't make me like, whoa. I have one question. He said to you, you better kill him or he's going to be a big problem. He can't, if he can't do it, have someone else do it. And he didn't care what he had to spend, right? Objection. Asked and answered. That's been asked and answered. You seem pretty calm when he's saying this to you. Wouldn't you agree with that? I don't know how my demeanor was. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I wasn't like, whoa, like I didn't run out and jet out of there. Had he said that to you before? Like when he wanted his brother-in-law killed? Said what? He's never he wanted spoken about... Killed. He wanted killed. He didn't care how much he had to spend to do it. No, ma'am. He's never spoken about Professor Michael or murder or having anything to do with that. That's why it didn't raise anything to me. I So right after he's telling you he needs somebody killed, he doesn't care what he has to spend, 30 seconds after that, he's checking in with you about Sigberto Garcia. He says at 6 minutes and 57 seconds in that clip, he knows I have you on salary. You think you'd be happy to know that. I didn't hear that. You did about not a salary or nothing, no. He says he doesn't have any bad feelings towards me, does he? Our paths never cross. That I can assume that it, maybe he was talking about Sigberto. Right. He says, I didn't know the two of you would be working out. He's talking about Sigfredo there. I believe so. Like, with what he's saying at that part, yes. Right after, from what we just talked about, he's saying, this guy needs to be killed. If he can't kill him, find somebody else to do it. He's going to be a big problem. He's fucking with me. He's fucking with his wife, right? Objection, accident, answer. Overruled. He's talking about Garcia right after that. I don't know if he was talking about Garcia. You He's just, talking about Garcia now that he, the, the part that where you're saying that, oh, our paths never cross or whatever. Okay. I can assume he's talking about Sigfredo, but at that time, I don't think he's talking about Kill and all of this and saying that it was him. Why didn't he just say his name? What he's trying to do when he's checking in is, he have any bad feelings towards me? I keep you on, I have you on salary. You think you'd be happy about that? He's trying to make sure that Garcia doesn't have a reason not to help you with this, right? I didn't hear anything about the salary and He's saying keeping him keeping me happy. There was no overlap in us dating. I keep you on the payroll, right? I I'm not going to say yes to that because I don't believe that that's what So, was he checking with you in that about. clip we just heard to see if Garcia had any bad blood against him? Not at that part, no ma'am. All right. Next, after he's checked, he tells you what he needs done. He's checking with you about Garcia. Then he's saying, I look for things to do for you. You don't have to ask me for shit. I'm the one that's like, hey, someone's birthday is coming up. I got you, right? That's what he said, yes. Okay. Just like when he's offering to send you and your mom on a cruise, right? Well, he offered it, but like I told you, I had never went on a cruise with my Paying mom. for the uh, Dominican vacation, right? He looks for things to do for you. Okay. To keep you happy. I guess. When you were with Charlie Adelson, you were they you were sleeping with both Charlie Adelson and Garcia at the same time, right? I mean They I weren't aware can't. of each other. I mean they knew of each other, but they didn't know you were with both of them at the same time, right? Not that I was I, I mean it might have overlapped, but I don't remember I don't remember that. Okay. I mean, I don't remember if it was... Charlie Adelson time. didn't know that there was any overlap. <clears throat> that he didn't know? I don't know what he knew. Okay, well, he told you. I We, we didn't have any overlap. Oh, with, with the, from the video? Right. And you tried to keep them separate. That was something that you did when, were, when you were with Charlie, right? You tried to keep Garcia separate from him? Well, I didn't think they'd like each other. Right. Gar Garcia was jealous of Charlie. I believe so. We heard Charlie say he helps you out when it's somebody's birthday. Who's he talking about? I have no idea. I don't know if he's talking about Sigfredo because I know there was a comment about like some GoPro or whatever, but. Isn't Garcia's, when's Garcia's birthday? The 27th of April. Of April. Okay. So is he talking about getting Garcia birthday presents? I Not, not to my knowledge. I don't know. I'm assuming maybe that's what he's talking about, but. 
Why would he get Garcia a birthday present? He always jokes about stupid things like that. Why would he get his ex-girlfriend's boyfriend a birthday present? I wouldn't know, but he'd make jokes like that before, just like the GoPro, but he never got him a GoPro camera or whatever it was. Um, after your discussion about Garcia, he checks in on Garcia's gang connections, right? See if those are still there? Who checks in? Charlie Adelson. Checks in. Fact, He's never been in a gang. Right? Overruled. Garcia's not in a gang. Let's listen to another one. All right. So when I first started that clip, he said, I don't think they want to mess with his connections. And he says, is he so far removed? Does, does he still have people? Does he have anybody that he can call up that's, right? He's, I didn't even, I, you didn't hear I'm that? trying to like hear what he's saying and I didn't hear that. Okay. He then says to you at the end of that clip, listen, you giving money to somebody is not an admission of any kind of guilt. I heard that part. Okay. Guilt of what? I don't know. What would you be guilty of? Exactly. I don't know. Well, then why is he saying that to you? I don't know. You were, what did you understand it to mean? I don't know. I, don't, I can't interpret what it was happening at that time. Like, I don't know what it means. He was saying that because you were concerned that giving this $5,000 would make you look guilty, right? That it would make me look guilty? Yeah. If that's your assumption, but I, I didn't do any of that. All right. He says, let me ask you a question. When everybody was there the next day, did any of you take any money? It's not like you're driving around in a Bentley, cruising around in a mega yacht. You heard that, right? Yes, ma'am. What did you understand that to mean? I don't know, but now it kind of makes sense with everything that, you know, like with other people saying it about the money, but nobody ever got money. I don't know what. When he said when everybody there was there the next day, what day is he talking about? I don't know. Isn't he saying when everybody, you, Tuto, Tato, were together the next day after the murder when you gave them the money, none of you took it and did anything extravagant, right? None of y'all were I that's what it's assuming. That's what it makes it look like to me. Okay. I see it now. He's checking to see y'all weren't too flashy with this that would draw attention to you, right? Okay. Objection, mischaracterization of the evidence. Overruled. In the form of a question next time, Mr. Steven. Okay. Did you ask him what that meant? I don't recall if I did or if I didn't. Okay. At the end of that conversation, in that last clip, he says... He says, you know who this is coming from? The inside. What did you understand that to mean? I didn't understand what he was talking about. He keeps saying it has nothing to do with me. He's giving scenarios and you're misinterpreting it. And I can't remember because that was from 2014. Okay. I, I did not. Did you hear him say, you know who this is coming from, the inside? He's saying that, but he's not saying it toward, like, he's not implying me directly. What did you understand that to mean? I didn't know. Okay. So... Not the inside circle, you, him, Tato Tuto, of who knew well, how this murder went That's down. what I'm saying. You keep implying these things, and that's not, you're taking it out of context. And I know that looks bad now with everything that we've been hearing, but it's obviously it didn't make me like, oh my God. Like I said, I didn't run out of there and think it was a big deal. He chose you for a reason, though, right? You were the Apparently. person that he chose to take care of this. I mean, I know you're saying you don't know today, but we heard you on the wiretap call. In that call, you say, I, I fuck up bitches for no reason. You say, this guy is going to have a big ass problem. I am the wrong person to God forgive him that he said the wrong fucking name. Now this is my business. You yes. said that, right? Yes, ma'am. And that's okay. taken out of context as well. well you were I pretty was angry by that. Yeah, I'm sure you were angry. You were pretty tough in those calls, though. You were somebody who knows how to take care of things, somebody who people shouldn't mess with, weren't you? You should have played all the other calls as well. You just, one little call that I was so upset already. We've been, he's been annoying me with this different scenarios. Right. For today, all the other calls. Today. And I was. You're acting, yeah. you're pretending not to be that person. You just don't know anything about anything, didn't ask That's any questions. Objection. 
improper question. She's pretending to be someone today. All right, I'll, we'll strike the question. Ask another question. Today you're saying you don't know anything and you didn't ask any questions, right? Yes, ma'am. Why were you talking in code on the wire? I guess that's what everybody's implying is code. I know I made a comment saying, like, I'm so tired of this code shit or whatever because we're around, I'm either around my coworkers, I'm around my children, I'm around other people. So he's probably around his coworkers. You told Sigfredo, or you told Sigfredo Garcia that Ethan's clothes cost $65.70, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Those were actually the last four digits of the undercover, undercover phone number. That was a code, right? I just did not want to say it over the phone, somebody's phone number, because I was either at work or I don't know where I was. Why would giving a phone number cause an issue for somebody at work or one of your kids? He's trying to call some number that they want me to figure out if it's somebody blackmailing their family. Why would I say that phone number out loud? Right, but you're not saying the whole story. You've already told Garcia the story when you're at home. On the phone, you're just giving him the number. Why couldn't you just say the number? I just said it that way. You didn't extent. say the number because you were afraid law enforcement was might be listening and you knew exactly what it was about, right? Why would I think they were listening? I wouldn't use my phone. All right. You say that... What's a, you said that you got a burner phone, and you got a burner phone the day after the police went to uh, his job, right? I never got him? the burner phone. I said Sigfredo got the burner phone when mm -hmm. after what, before he got arrested. Didn't you think it was crazy that Garcia wanted you to use a burner phone? They just went, the feds just went to go question him. And at the same time, I didn't even know that they were doing it the same exact moment that they were banging on my door. If you had nothing to do with the murder, why did Garcia get you a burner phone, not just him? I don't know. He's the one who got it. Because okay. he figured that it, it was somebody banging in his door, and then I guess that's why we wanted to talk. But you'd have the same phone number your whole life. Weren't you curious as to why he wanted you to use a burner phone now? No. You didn't ask? No. The feds just came to his job. Okay. Um... And after getting the burner phones, you fled your home. I never fled. You never stayed at your home again. I packed up myself a couple of days after, but my family you wanted... You had someone pack up your stuff. No, I packed it. If they had the cameras over there, they would have seen that I went there. I packed my stuff, and then I had one of Sigfredo's guy friends to go do the U-Haul for me because I can't lift anything. You said that you had no idea murder of Dan Markell occurred that summer of 2014, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So he never, Sigfredo Garcia never, where did he say that he was going when you, you took him to the comfort rental car? I never took him. Okay. It's just a coincidence then that of all the places. I, I never went. knew his whereabouts or whatever around that time because we weren't even together. Okay, just a coincidence then that of all the places you could be in Miami and that he could be in Miami, you're using a cell site that services Comfort Rental at the exact moment that he's renting a car and you go straight there, time on the rental car, and you go back home. I never took him to go get a rental. Okay, so that is just a coincidence you're saying? If, if that's your opinion, yes, ma'am. And he was also in that rental car as soon as he got back from that trip to Tallahassee. That was outside of your, of your apartment, right? They had that... The GPS car, ping? Yeah, the GPS ping on that parking lot, but that parking lot, other people live there. Okay. Did you ever see him in the rental car? No, I did not. Okay. And you went right back to that area later that day? Right back to what area? To the area of Comfort Rental Car. And you weren't taking the car back with him? No, I did not. I never took him to get a rental. What about when the Prius was at your house the night before the Tallahassee trip? Did he mention either of those times that he's at your house right before, right after the June trip or right before the July trip, where he was going and what he'd been doing? I never even knew that the Prius car was in the parking lot. 
Did he just min- did he say that he was about to go to Tallahassee? No, I would have remembered if he said something about Tallahassee. He doesn't know anybody in Tallahassee. What about during the 15 or 20 times that you communicated with Garcia during the June trip or the July trip? He never mentioned where he was. You never asked him where he was or what he was doing. I never asked him where he was, and he wouldn't tell me even if I was to ask him. He doesn't tell me things. What about the night of the murder? You're July 18th, when you're consistent with being at Rivera's house after you go past Yindra Mascaro's residence. Did you go to Luis Rivera's that night? No, ma'am. Where were you? I don't recall what I, where I was in July 18th. Okay, well, you were talking to Garcia, and then it shows you going up near Rivera's house, and then after that, your phone is powered off for the night, right? And that's when you go spend the night at Charlie's? I don't know what happened in July 18th. That's what it's saying on the... Things or whatever. Well, you told your attorney when she was asking you questions, you did spend the night with Charlie that night, right? No, I was, I I don't even remember where I was. I don't know if I was up north or whatever. I don't remember that day. Yindra was taking care of your kids that night, right? Well, apparently, yeah. When she had said that she took, I didn't remember that day until she mentioned that it was, it might have been that night. Yindra was taking care of your kids that night then? That's, yeah. that's what That's what I'm saying is I don't see her. My daughter was little at that time. Like, I never leave my daughter overnight. That's why it wouldn't make sense to me. I never leave my daughter, like, overnight at so somebody's Yindra house. So Yindra was not telling the truth when she was No, I, I don't know if she babysat that day. I just don't remember. I don't recall ever leaving my children at night. I was living with my mom at that time. Well, if that was the case, I would have had my mom because they, they would, the kids would have been more comfortable. If Charlie invited you over, you're going up there, your phone's powered off for the night, and you're coming back for that direction that next morning. That's the route that it's showing, but I don't remember what I did that night. Well, There's you no stayed text with Charlie messages. during that time, though, right? No, I didn't. I don't remember what I was doing. Okay. What about the next morning, the morning of July 19th, when you and Garcia were at Rivera's place? Me and Garcia were in Barrera's place. Right. That was the whole situation. There were so many different versions of that story. Okay. Well, in your previous testimony, you were asked what you were doing that day, and you were shown this text. You called Luis Rivera during the June and July trips. You called his old number, right? That 934 number you had in your phone as Tato? I called the number, but I never spoke to Luis. When you couldn't get in touch with Garcia, you called that number. I believe so. And you didn't talk to Garcia because that wasn't his phone at the time, right? What, the 934 number? Right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You never talked to Luis Rivera on the phone, usually. Not that I recall, no. Okay. You did talk You did talk to him, though. You called him those two dates, and then you talked to him the day of the money drop, July 19th, right? It said that he had called me. Right. You called him. He called you, and then you called him back, Right. I believe so. That's what the call log says. And you spoke to him. You tried to call him in June and July because you knew that he and Garcia were together in Tallahassee during that time. I didn't know that they were here. Well, then why would you call Luis Rivera? I don't remember why I called him. I called him in June and in July. Yeah, on the June trip and the July trip. If he was with Garcia, maybe I was trying to get a hold of Garcia. Those were the only times all summer, though, that you called that number, though. I don't recall that. That's what the expert said? I don't recall that, that that's the only time. If you were always trying to call Rivera whenever you were looking for Garcia, you would have called it more than two times the whole summer, right? I don't recall that. And then on July 19th, the reason that y'all were talking that day, you and Luis Rivera, was because that was the day you were supposed to deliver money, right? I never delivered any money. You said... So the only time that you call him is during his June and July trip to Tallahassee in the day of the money drop that summer, and your phone locations are consistent with being at his house, but those are just all coincidences. You didn't have anything to do with this murder. That's what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Aren't you mad at Garcia and Charlie for doing this, and you're innocent, and you're having to answer for it? Am I mad at them? Yeah. Yeah, I've been upset. If you were mad at Garcia, I mean, just uh, not long ago, just this month, you said on a recorded call to him, I can't talk to you, I can't touch you, I can't see you, I can't feel you, and you were crying about it. Yeah, he's the father of my kids, so I'm going to love him forever. And this $17,000 cash bike, 
during the six weeks after the murder, being put on the Adelson payroll, even though you didn't collect rent, you made the one appointment, your $4,000 breast augmentation, all of that within the two months of the murder, those are just all coincidences to it. You didn't have anything to do with this. The money had nothing to do with anything that you did. I've explained everything already. Okay. All the favors that Charlie did for you after you and him broke up. The trips. Nothing, nothing with that had to do anything with the murder. That was just a coincidence, too. Just him just being nice. Mm, I guess so. Okay. The fact that he called you out of all of his ex-girlfriends after his mom just said an ex-girlfriend was mentioned. That's a coincidence, too. I guess so. The fact that your husband committed a murder for your boyfriend. That's also just a coincidence. You didn't have anything to do with it? I didn't have anything to do with it. I mean, those are some pretty unbelievable coincidences, right? Objection in public. That's sustained. Okay, you either have the worst luck or you did this, right? Objection in public question. Sustained. Garcia would never do anything to help Charlie Adelson, would he? I wouldn't think that, but with everything that's been, that's all in the evidence and stuff, I mean, it looks pretty bad. And you said in 2019 he would never I, do anything. I did say him. that because I would never think that they would like each other in any way or do favors for each other. Okay. I and see why I'm in the middle. I'm smack in the middle. I right. see it. That's why I'm fighting for my life. And so you did say Garcia would never do anything to help Charlie Adelson. In my 2019 testimony, yes, I did mention that. Right. And in opening, your attorney said that there was definitive proof of a link between Garcia and Charlie. What is it? What did my attorney say? No, what's the link between Garcia and Charlie? That they knew each other or they spoke to each other. How? I don't know. Apparently everything's being done behind my back. That's why. That's all. Thank you. Well, you just watched Katie's testimony. Do you think she's going to be spending the rest of her life in a Florida penitentiary? Do you think the jury's going to vote not guilty? Do you think she has any chance of appeal? Please consider joining my Patreon, YouTube membership, or donating to this channel to help me obtain these videos, edit these videos, and present these videos to you. Every little bit helps, and I really do appreciate it. As you know, we're building up the best collection of interrogation videos that's ever been seen on YouTube, ever. And I spent a lot of time improving the original files. That's why I started this channel. I noticed a lot of other channels were more about quantity over quality. And they upload videos with really low volume. And just terrible presentations. And they really like to destroy the footage. And I try to preserve the footage. Enhance the footage and give you the best possible show on planet Earth. And I just want to thank some special people. Mark Wiley from Ireland. Daylight Disinfectant from St. Petersburg, Florida. And of course, the Roma Army from Canada. There's a lot of other shout outs, but those are coming soon. Thank you all for your support and for believing in Crime Circus. Until next time, remember to stay safe out there because you know it's a dangerous world.